So welcome our, uh, to our talk. Uh, our talk is called Bring Care Upstream Releases to Federal Rawhide in One Step. It's a very short and concise title. Uh, and this is, talk, this is a talk about the Packet project. Uh, so let me first introduce our team. Uh, we have four team members uh, from our team here. So the, I'm Tomáš, this is Franta, there's Jirka and there's Rado. So there's the four of us. And our team has actually much more people and uh, they are at home, they, they are not, not here. So if you ever open an issue or send a pull request to our projects, like you will probably see one of the faces commenting on the pull request or, or, or the issue. Uh, so do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Uh, okay, so I guess let's start. Uh, let's start the why, uh, like why we are working on packet project, or why we want to actually bring uh, new upstream releases into raw height, like very, very easily. Uh, this is a very nice diagram which was drawn by Steph, uh, and we used it in uh, Red Hat Summit, and it's, it like shows you what was the current flow of, uh, or, or like work of upstream uh, developers and how the, their work lands into the Red Hat ecosystem. And by Red Hat ecosystem, I mean all our operating systems, which means Fedora, stable Fedora releases, Fedora Rawhide, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Red Hat Core OS, and CentOS, and all, all these different flavors. As you can see on the left side, we have the engineers and contributors. They're on their code. They create new features. They fix bugs. And this, all of this code lands in different, uh, like in different projects. So you can see like Linux kernel on, or Python or different projects on GitHub. And then at some point, the project uh, says like, OK, it's time to do an upstream release. Uh, and that's usually the time when the downstream maintainers pick up the upstream releases and bring them into Fedora Rawhide. And then at some point, uh, all these new upstream releases bubble to uh, all the other different flavors. So I'm pretty sure like all of you work in upstream, so you know this very well. So is there anything that you are missing or are you okay with this workflow and like would you like to change it or keep it? Yes, Mohan? Uh, oh, so uh, Mohan says that Apple is missing. Uh, yeah, it's not in intentionally, uh, but well, okay. So, w what's your comment actually? No, it's just missing. Oh, all right. Apple. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we are missing Apple on the on the uh, on the slide. That's that's correct. We should fix it. Uh, okay, so I'll give you my answer. What's missing here? Uh, like my problem here is that all the arrows are just pointing from left to right, and there is no arrow which would point from right to left. Which means that when something goes good or bad on the right side, the people or the projects on the left side would not realize it. And with the packet project, we are trying to do something like this, that we would have a, also a flow from the right side that, for example, there's a new upstream release, we get it to Fedora Rawhide, and the tests would fail or the compose would fail, and we want to e inform the upstream project about this. Uh, so this is one of our goals. And you can also see that the color of the arrows between the projects and Fedora high change. And that's also another goal of us, and that would be like automation, uh, create automation to bring the upstream uh, releases to Fedora Rawhide. And that's what this talk is about. Uh, so uh, now it's up to Franta to introduce the packet tool. Yeah, so to help people uh, with the work uh, process described in the previous slide, we uh, work on the two core packet. So packet is a package, a Python package with the Python API and the command line interface. You can install it easily with your DNF. Uh, it has a rich uh, command line interface with many subcommands. For instance, you have subcommand for proposing updates from upstream repository to downstream to this git or to syncing changes back to upstream from the disk git. You can run builds or create updates or create uh, SRPM files or run a copper build. Uh, the main advantage to use packet uh, is you can use this subcommand uh, directly from the upstream repository. So you can, here you can see the, one of the subcommands, the status. 
and you can run this status from the uh, repository or you can place the URL and now you can get the all necessary info. So you are working on the real code, not the patches, not uh, in the disk git, but you are using the real code. Uh, so uh, to automate more things, we have also the service which is built on top of the packet, uh, the tool, uh, so it's not the vice versa. Uh, by now, we uh, packet service works as a GitHub app. Uh, before you ask, uh, we have other Git forges in mind, but we have to start with something, so GitHub app only for now. Uh, the packet service, packet as a service, as you can find it in the GitHub, uh, uses packet tool to do the real thing. Uh, and uh, packet service uses its own uh, tokens, its own uh, users and authentication. With the packet tool, you are using your uh, tokens and your user. Uh, we have no API yet and no, the, no client for the API itself. So this all the service and Tomas will show some examples. Yeah, so thank you for the interaction. So uh, yeah, let's not uh, put many more uh, text on the slides and let's start with pictures. Like how does the package service look actually? So. As Franta said, you can easily find it on uh, GitHub Marketplace or if you just Google it, I, I believe that Google would give you the right thing. And if you install it into your GitHub project, it would look like this, that now you'd, you'd be using a package service, which means that whatever you do in your GitHub repo, we would get all the events. So for example, you push new commits to a pull request, you create a new release or there's a new issue or there's a, a new comment in an issue and you would start getting these events. And uh, this means that uh, we are getting the events, and then you can like you can set what the package service sh should do about these events. Which means that, for example, when you create a new upstream release, uh, you could say that okay, so package service, please uh, get this new upstream release and push it to Fedora or Hide. And that's actually what you can do, and you'll see it in a bit. So this is how it would look in your GitHub repo, and. Then when you start using it, like one of the like, uh, main features we have right now, that we would do uh, copper builds for every change in a pull request. So which means that, for example, in here, someone created a new pull request on a repo which is using package service, uh, and all is set up, and package service actually took the change and created source RPM and pushed it to copper for a build. So right now the build is pending, and when the build is finished, uh, Packet service would create a new comment in the pull request and would inform the user how you can actually uh, get get the change, install it locally, and play with the uh, actually content of the pull request locally. Uh, we actually cr did this for sake of Red Hat Summit because I know that all of us here are engineers, so we, and we are working on the Fedora project, so we know how to get things from Copper. But at Red Hat Summit, we have uh, like Red Hat customers, and they are not very familiar with. Uh, Fedora Copper, so uh, we wanted to give this nice comment to, the, uh, to them. Uh, and the main thing, we have a website, so if you want to know more about our principles or uh, documentation or all these things, so please remember packet.dev, that's our website where everything lives and you can uh, learn more. Uh, any questions so far? Yes, Igor? So, do you have Uh, yeah, so the question is uh, whether we are using it for Red Hat specific projects and whether you have, need to have spec file in upstream. And that's actually a question on like slide uh, plus 10, so we'll get to it. But thank you for asking. Uh, okay, so let's move on. Uh, okay. So if you know something about our project, you might remember that we, we had a bet, and we did this bet with Dominic. Uh, 
there's Dominic. And it was done at DEFCONF, and the bet was about that if we are able to get uh, 500 projects on board of package service by flock, uh, Dominic would grow a beard. And that was the bet. Uh, and you can, as you can see, Dominic doesn't have any beard, so <laughs> <laughs> you can guess how it ended up. Yeah, uh, right now we have like tens of projects on board. Uh, it turned out that it's actually really tough to create a service which is supposed to be like secure and scalable and has all the features and be bug free and like well maintainable and it took us actually a lot of time to do this, uh, especially the security part. Uh, because if you think about it, it, well, when we are creating source RPMs in our service, it means that you can have like RMRF in your spec file and then you could actually trash our, like, our deployment or you could just do like uh, look in the files and send all the content to your server and probably try to access our certificates or tokens, all, all these things. So it took us actually a long time to figure out se to do security right. And since we actually robbed you of the thing of seeing Dominic with a beard, so I decided actually to, <laughs> like, I robbed you of this. <laughs> and hopefully uh, in a year maybe we, we could get this. And it's actually a lesson for us to make like bets which we can actually win. So, so good job, Dominic, that you win. <laughs> okay, so let's continue with actually the uh, topic of our presentation, and it is how you can actually use Packet to bring an upstream release to Rawhide. And we'll show you in these two different flavors as you've seen so far with the tool or with the service. So with the tool itself. Uh, First thing, as Franta said, like when you are using the tool on your command line, you are using your credentials and all these things. So you need to have the Fedora Kerberos uh, ticket, uh, then you need to be in your upstream project, and then you need to have like tags, meaning the new upstream tag uh, fetched from the upstream repo. So that's, that's the meaning of these three commands. And then you can just call one command, uh, which is called propose update. And this command actually takes the upstream release uh, and updates spec file in Fedora. Uh, in this case, uh, it actually pushes directly to this git. Uh, th that's the no PR command. Uh, the thing is that you can't create pull requests via API in Fedora this git right now. There is an issue in Pegure API and we are waiting for a new deployment to fix this. And so the precise meaning of the command is that, uh, hey, take the 0.5 upstream release and update spec file in Fedora and like and commit it and push it. And then you can build it with another command which is packet build and uh, that's it. So, so it's pretty simple uh, but as the title of the presentation says like do it in one step and you can see there's a bunch of steps here so let's try make it even simpler and that's using the packet service. So as I said, uh, packet service. Oh, Pavel. Uh, so, so, so in this case, you need to have the right access to the disk git because. So it's working under my name. Under my name. Yeah, in this case, it is. Yeah. So, it, actually, like the packet build command is just a very thin wrapper on top of fed package build. Like it would just. Uh, Download the disk git. Yeah. Around the build and. Yeah. So it's submitted submit from my box actually. It's not uh, in the service. Yeah. Yes. In this case, it's everything running locally. Uh, yeah. It's. Very similar concept as Fed package, uh, but in this case, uh, yeah, in this case, uh, if you want package service to update your packages in Fedora or Hide, you would need to give permissions to the packet user in Fedora to actually be able to, <coughs> sorry, commit commit to your uh, this Git repo. Uh, and as soon as the pull request start working, like you don't even need to do that, and packet service would be able to create pull requests for your this this Git repos. Uh, Okay, I already uh, explained jobs. So we have different jobs uh, in package service and they have different triggers. Uh, all right, yeah, nice. I, I even have an example. So we have the job proposed downstream, which means like uh, get the upstream release for Fedora and get it to Fedora this git. The trigger is release, so it's obvious. Uh, we, have all, we also support like different triggers for different jobs and this is all documented. 
and all the jobs can have additional metadata and metadata in this case is also like to what branch you want to push. So you can actually define three jobs for all the maintained Fedora branches and push new releases like this with package service. Uh, and okay, and as like the title, the, yeah, Mohan? <laughs> okay, so we have uh, the question if the spec file needs to be upstream repo again, and uh, it's second slide from now, like the question. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, yeah, and just one comment to this, to this slide that uh, package service doesn't support builds yet because we didn't have time to implement it, but hopefully we'll be able to do it in coming weeks uh, so that we would have it all. And finally, let's go to the question of, okay, I'll skip the first question and let's talk about the, uh, do I really need to have a spec file in the upstream repo? Like this question, we was asked this question like 100 times and everyone was furious about the packet project, like having spec files in upstream repo, like do you, do you really need to have it or do we need to have it? So the answer is no, you don't need to have it. You can actually do something like this. Uh, in packet, we support things called actions, which means that we have our own actions, uh, like default implementation of some actions, and you can easily completely swap the default implementation for your command. So in our case, we expect that the spec file is in the upstream repo, but you can actually easily download it from whatever place you want. So you can put these three lines into your packet.yaml and it would download the spec file from, in this case, from Fedora's git. Uh, or uh, actually another, another way how to do this, you, you can actually have template of spec file in upstream and then you can have some action which will just process it and uh, render it into the proper, proper spec file well, syntax. What about having a repo with a spec file and making that the target and having the spec file then pull the so, so the question is if we could do it the other way around and have a repo with spec file and pull the code instead. So that's actually how this git works. Like that's literally how this git works. That it's a repo with spec file and all the other files needed to uh, create the source RPM and the upstream archives are actually pulled. Uh, so yeah, that's this git. Like you can keep using this git and don't care about pick it at all and you, you are good. Uh, but that, uh, and actually thank you for the question because that's also other feedback we got so far. Uh, like I'm actually okay working in this Git, but I would like to have like more automation uh, regarding like getting things from upstream. So maybe that's also a area where we as a project could like look into and try to figure out some workflows uh, which could be better and automate something. So yeah, that's also a thing which we could explore. Yes, Alexandra? Yes. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I probably don't understand. So in, in this case, where, where you were using just this git and spec file within this git, uh, I imagine your workflow could be relatively easy because you have the spec file and the upstream repo to my workspace, going uh, to where I'm actually having my uh, spec file. And then I run the packet tool on my uh, laptop locally, then I do the upstream code and the spec file from my local environment. Uh, so the comment from Alexandra is that uh, with, with the packet CLI tool you can just clone the upstream repo and put a spec file inside and work from that uh, workplace. So yeah, that, that's, that's exactly what we are trying to go for, that you would work all the time from your upstream repo and you would not need to touch this git. Like that's what we are trying to do. Yes, Bishek? Can you discover the latest uh, tag? Because in, in the example, you, you, the tag was one of the parameters. Could you just do it magically and figure out which is the, the latest one? Like, if at 0 0.50. Uh, yeah, we are using rebase helper to determine uh, the last version if you don't didn't set it. So it's. There are some sources in rebase of the 
for example, Anitia and GitHub directly, maybe. Okay, so, so the question is that on the previous command, uh, it was a very long command where we ex uh, explicitly specified a lot of stuff and it could be actually discovered. Uh, and y yes, uh, and actually you can run the propose command just by itself. Uh, for the diskit branch, the default is master and you can also see dot, that means like work in the current di directory, that's also the default and as Franta said, for the version we can use uh, the uh, upstream release monitoring to get the latest version of, of the software. So, yeah, I, I was really trying to be like very explicit in this case so that it's clear what's happening because if I would just print, print packet propose update, it wouldn't be clear what's, what might be happening. And uh, do we have to specify the version? Is there, uh, compulsory argument or uh, So the question is whether the version is a uh, mandatory argument. Uh, the answer is no. It's, uh, as Franta said, it, uh, Packet is trying to figure it out on its own uh, if, if you don't specify it and it's trying to like pick the up latest upstream release via the upstream release monitoring or, and we, we definitely have also like some. Uh, we can determine it from the spec file as well. Oh, oh yeah. And bring the highest one. But the spec yeah. file is coming from the district. So it might be have, it might have another question. Well, but we are still, we still expect that you have spec file in the upstream repo and that the spec file is up to date. So that's our expectation. So initially to start with, you will pull it from the disk and then... Uh, no, that, that's actually a special case, to be honest. Like, okay. we expect that up, the spec file is in the upstream repo and that it's up to date and the version in there is the one you want to bring to Fedora. And if not, like it's up to you to figure it out, or, or pretty much like that's uh, that's when packet is like not very uh, like that's the special case. That's what I'm trying to say. So uh, right now, when the, ups, the release monitoring detects that they have a new version of a project, it does some Bugzilla useless, useless attachments. Uh, so will this code replace? So the question is whether uh, the packet project could replace present functionality with uh, an ETI and upstream release monitoring where new bugs are being created with some additional uh, things. So the answer is no. Uh, actually, uh, the maintainer is from upstream release monitoring is working on exact features you just described that instead of creating bugs, you lost, uh, the, uh, the one of the services from upstream release monitoring would create pull requests in this git, uh, but sadly uh, the maintainer got sidetracked or with the rawhide gating initiative, so he was working on that and he didn't have time to work on uh, the pull requests. So. Uh, okay, question from Igor, if, if, uh, if, it, if it would use Packet. Uh, yeah, we actually collaborate together and uh, the new code he's developing it, it actually uses some parts of Packet, like from Packet API. Uh, I'm not sure if like w which parts exactly, but it's like some parts are We need used. a forking and creating the pull request in mm -hmm. Yeah, my use case is pretty simple. I have 900 Rust packages and I, I don't want to read every second day, so I want to get some pull requests which are, well, nobody will put spec file to the Rust packages upstream ever. Mm -hmm. Nobody will set up any GitHub hooks or anything like that. So basically, uh, the only way for me to find out whether there is new release is release monitoring, which is with some federal messaging, and mm -hmm. I want to get some pull requests. So comment from Igor is that he's maintaining 900 Rust packages and it's infeasible to to every upstream repo to have packet YAML and do all of this. So he's using upstream release monitoring and fed message to get notified. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's very, I'm pretty sure there are more people like you with the similar use case. And like in current case with packet project, like it's not one of our I mean, we don't have capacity to like support you 100% and create you like perfect solution. Like right now we are trying to be more generic and like for everyone and hopefully at some point we would be able to start implementing workflows for people with special needs. Uh, 
So that's my answer. So how many uh, uh, of those projects which you uh, which are using the packet have a spec file in the upstream? So the question is how many projects already have spec file in the upstream which uh, packet is using? Uh, all of them. As I said, we have tens of projects who are using Packet right now, and all of them have spec file in the upstream repo. But like on the other hand, all of the people are, I would say, Red Hat employees, Fedora contributors, and all these things. Maybe you can uh, show the first FAQ. All right, first question. Yeah, and the other question we are getting uh, asked a lot, and it was asked right now, is that what if the upstream project doesn't care about Fedora or Packet or whatever? Yeah. It, the answer is just create a mirror on GitHub and like mirror, mirror the, exactly the upstream project and put more commits with the Fedora packaging and then you can start using Packet right away. So, but I, I agree like it's pain to maintain such a thing because you constantly need to pull new changes from the upstream repo and hopefully we'll be able to implement uh, automation into packet. So, for example, when there is a new upstream release, packet would create pull request in your mirror so that you don't have to do it manually. But it's just just a thought right now. But we are getting out of time. So the question is about mirroring. Uh, I believe you need to do it yourself. Mirroring it's, it's possible, but you you have to rebase the distribution specific commits on top of it. Mm -hmm. So is the goal to have a uh, to make packaging with here, or is the goal to make CI for upstream projects on Fedora with here? So the question is whether it's easier to have CI for upstream projects easier or packaging easier. I would say both, but the thing is that. If when our goal is both, we can't do like one perfectly. We can do like two maybe good. So yeah, it would make sense to focus on one, but right now the goal is like both. And maybe like the higher priority has like, is uh, making CI for upstream projects easier. And that's actually the theme of the next presentation. And yeah, we are, sorry, we are out of time. Uh, yeah, Dominic. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. So we, ha we have a workshop tomorrow, so please come by and you'll see all of the things in action you just heard about. And thank you for coming. These are the links to the project, to slides, and to our website, and to our mailing list. So feel free to get in touch with us. We are here till Sunday. Thank you for coming.